Hello, so I just wanted to give a quick um, demonstration of the newest version of my role-playing game system. And this is using large language models as Game Master. This, this uh, edition uh, uses only local models. It's using the Llama 3.1, uh, 8 billion parameter model. Um, and so uh, the, the screen setup is a little bit different. So I have my dialogue screen. I also have this character sheet screen where you can see your character with um, all the skills and everything. And uh, the chat history contains the full chat log because the dialogue screen only contains the most recent message from the LLM. And the chat history will contain every, both the player and um, LLM chat um, messages. Um, and so, um, before in the beginning, before you have started, or the first thing that will happen is that the LLM will create an introduction based on the character sheet and also um, on um, some world background that you make. So if I now hit enter, so it takes a little bit of time since everything is local. And you can see here, adventure begins. And so it will stream the answer. And I have also included a voice uh, AI and uh, this voice AI is using, th this is an open AI model uh, because there is no local model for that. So it will uh, speak this uh, output from the LLM to you. Welcome to New Haven Blues. In the year 2250, Humanity has retreated behind a massive glass dome to escape the toxic air that now grips the planet. The city of New Haven is a melting pot of lawlessness and corruption, where the police department struggles to maintain order. You are Robert Dolly, a seasoned cop with a reputation for being tough on crime. Born on the streets, you've been molded by the harsh realities of your job. Your adoptive mother, a policewoman herself, instilled in you the values of justice and integrity. With your scarred hand, a constant reminder of the dangers you face every day, you're driven to bring peace to this troubled city. As you step out into the bright lights of New Haven's central square, the hum of hover cars and the chatter of pedestrians fill the air. The smell of food from street vendors wafts through the crowds, enticing passersby with savory aromas. But beneath the surface, the city is a cauldron of tension where rival gangs and corrupt officials vie for power. Your current situation, you're standing in front of the New Haven Police Department's headquarters, your standard cop gun holstered at your side. Your eyes scan the crowds, taking in the sights and sounds of the city. You've got a few minutes before your shift starts, but you know it won't be long before something or someone demands your attention. Now it's time for you to take action. Please provide your player input. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is mainly based on the background, also the gear and the name and the role and everything, right? So, okay, I'll try to, uh, I go to, I enter the station and go up to my sergeant's office and you can write whatever you like of course so when you write an action this is your player action and so an LLM will classify whether it's a mundane or significant action if the action is mundane it will succeed automatically
You walk into the station, nodding to a few colleagues as you make your way to your sergeant's office. The fluorescent lights overhead seem to hum in sync with the chatter of the officers on duty. As you enter your sergeant's office, you see them sitting behind their desk, sipping a cup of coffee and staring at a holographic display projected from a small device on their desk. They look up as you approach and nod curtly. Morning, Dolly. Got a few minutes to chat before roll call. Your sergeant's eyes seem to bore into yours, as if searching for something. You sense that they might be trying to get at something specific, but you're not quite sure what. The atmosphere in the office is calm and professional, with only a hint of tension beneath the surface. What do you want to say or do next? Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna say, I tell him, sure, what, what's on your mind? And so these are all mundane actions, right? So you don't really need to to roll to see if you succeed or fail. Your sergeant's expression remains neutral, but you sense a hint of curiosity behind their eyes. They nod and lean back in their chair, steepling their fingers together. Actually, I was thinking about the Rodriguez case from last night, they say, their voice measured. The witness statement seemed a bit off. I'm not sure if we're looking at a legitimate crime or just some kid trying to get attention. Your sergeant pauses, studying you intently. What's your take on it? You were one of the first responders on the scene. Did anything strike you as unusual? The office remains quiet, with only the soft hum of the holographic display breaking the silence. What do you want to say or do next? Hmm. I tell him I will get right on that after my uh, visit to the crime scene. So I'm just, right now I'm just speeding up the story a little bit so we can get to some more significant actions so you can see how that works as well. And so this uh, speech uh, AI, that one is not local. So I could not find a local LLM or local AI that could do speech. So for that specific thing, I'm actually using the open AI text to speech um, API, which is very uh, cheap. The sergeant nods, seeming to expect as much. Good, good. I knew I could count on you, Dolly. Just keep an eye out for anything that might seem off, okay? We don't want to jump to conclusions just yet. You nod, already mentally preparing yourself for the visit to the crime scene. Your sergeant hands you a data pad with the case details and witness statements. Be careful, though. The streets can be pretty rough this time of day, they caution. You take the data pad and tuck it into your pocket, feeling a sense of anticipation. Time to get to work on this case. As you leave the office, you're greeted by the familiar sight of the police cruiser waiting for you outside. You hop in and start the engine, ready to head out to the crime scene. The streets are busier now, with pedestrians and hover cars making their way through the city. You navigate through the traffic, your mind focused on solving this case. You're about five minutes away from the crime scene. Okay. I tell my AI assistant in the car to park close to the crime scene.
Your AI assistant, a voice activated system built into the police cruiser's dashboard, responds promptly. Affirmative officer, I'm plotting the most efficient route to the crime scene. We'll be parking in a secure location nearby. The cruiser navigates through the streets, dodging pedestrians and hover cars with ease. As you approach the crime scene, the AI assistant announces your arrival. We're arriving at the scene officer, parking in designated area now. You notice that the cruiser has parked in a small alleyway adjacent to the crime scene. The area is cordoned off with police tape and several officers are milling about, chatting among themselves. A nearby squad car beeps its horn, signaling the arrival of another patrol unit. It's clear that the authorities are taking this case seriously. You take a moment to gather your thoughts before exiting the cruiser. What do you want to do next? Let's see. Let's set the scene. Walk to the crime scene. What can I see? As you step out of the cruiser and onto the sidewalk, you notice that the crime scene is a small alleyway between two buildings. The walls on either side are covered in graffiti and the air is thick with the smell of garbage and exhaust fumes. You walk towards the center of the alleyway where a cluster of police officers are gathered around something. As you approach, you see that it's a body lying on the ground. It's a young woman dressed in a dark blue jumpsuit and wearing a pair of scuffed up boots. The officers are examining the body, taking notes and snapping photos with their data pads. You recognize one of them as Officer Patel, who nods at you as you approach. Hey, Dolly, he says. We've got a situation here. Looks like our victim is, well, it's not pretty. You take in the scene, trying to get your bearings. The body appears to be that of a young woman, mid-twenties, with a few scrapes and bruises on her face. There's no immediate sign of trauma or struggle. What do you want to do next? Okay, so let's try to use some of our uh, skills. So, interrogation. Uh, so I have the awareness skill. Let's try to use that. I use my awareness skill to look for clues let's see what happens so now you can see it takes a little bit more time and here you can see it was a significant action difficulty is 13 success degree so the action combined intelligence and the skill awareness with a dice roll of one. So the difficulty was 13 and I only got 12. So the action was a failure with a degree of one. So let's see <laughs> what the answer is for this. As you focus your attention on the surroundings, trying to use your awareness skill to notice any clues that might have been missed, you feel a sense of unease creeping over you. It's as if your mind is clouded and you're not quite seeing things clearly. You take a deep breath and try to shake off the feeling, but it only seems to intensify. You glance around the alleyway, taking in the sights and sounds, but everything feels off. The graffiti on the walls seems more vibrant than usual, the smell of garbage more overpowering, and the hum of the city more jarring. You try to focus on the body, but it's as if your eyes are glazing over. You can't seem to process what you're seeing. 
You feel a sense of disorientation, like you've been hit with a wave of confusion. Officer Patel looks at you concerningly. Dolly, are you okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. You shake your head, trying to clear the fog from your mind. What's going on? Why can't you seem to focus? The body in front of you seems to be shifting. No, that's not right. It's just your imagination playing tricks on you. But then you see it. A small piece of paper tucked away in the victim's hand. It's a note written in hasty scribbles. Meet me at the old clock tower at midnight. The words seem to leap out at you, but as you try to process their meaning, everything goes dark. You stumble backwards, feeling dizzy and disoriented. What just happened? Rolling for next action. <laughs> okay, I don't really understand what that was all about, but... So... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I failed the roll with a degree of one, which is not much. And so depending on, on how much you fail with or succeed your role, the action or the outcome will be um, more extreme. So this was a not very extreme out, um, uh, outcome, right? But so he still finds something, but for some reason I stumble and fall I guess and get a wound so as you can see I got four wounds <laughs> which is a bit strange so it's not perfect yet this system um, but <laughs> it's entertaining at least so okay I pick up the notes and put it in my Pockets. Let's see. Yes, that's a Monday in action. As you reach out to grab the note, your fingers close around it and you tuck it into your pocket with a smooth motion. The officers around you barely even notice what's happening. You feel a sense of satisfaction at having secured the evidence, but it's fleeting. Your mind is still reeling from the strange sensation you experienced when trying to use your awareness skill earlier. <laughs> you can't shake the feeling that something was off and you're not sure what to make of it. Officer Patel notices your confusion and asks if you're okay. Hey, Dolly, you look a little shook up. Maybe we should get you out of here for a minute? You nod in agreement, still trying to process what's going on. As you step back from the body, you take a moment to collect your thoughts. The alleyway is quiet again, except for the usual sounds of the city. The officers are continuing their investigation, but they seem to be moving at a slower pace now that the initial shock has worn off. What do you want to do next? Okay, let's see now. So the outcome is that I add. So I add an item to my gear. So if you pick up something, uh, you will uh, add it here. So now you can see in my gear, I have this note, a written piece of information or evidence. And so now it's I, I can look at it later, right? So for instance, I could say, I go to my, go back to my police car and get my, um, let's see. Get my sensing equipment out. I wonder if there is something 
toxic in the air that made me stumble near the victim. So this is a mundane action, I guess. You walk over to your police car, parked a short distance away from the alleyway. You pop open the trunk and retrieve a small box containing your sensing equipment. Inside the box, you find a compact air quality analyzer, a thermal imaging device, and a portable UV light. You take a few minutes to set up the equipment, making sure everything is calibrated and functioning properly. With the gear in hand, you head back to the alleyway where the body was found. The officers are still investigating, but they're keeping a safe distance from the area where you stumbled earlier. You begin to scan the air with your equipment, running a series of tests to see if there's anything unusual present. The results come back quickly. No toxic chemicals, no unusual radiation signatures, and no anomalies in the UV spectrum. The thermal imaging device shows some minor temperature fluctuations near the body, but that's likely due to the natural decomposition process. You also notice some faint thermal signatures coming from a nearby dumpster, which might be worth investigating further. You fold up your equipment and put it back in the trunk of your car. It looks like you didn't find any immediate evidence of something toxic affecting you earlier. Still, you can't shake off the feeling that there's more to this case than meets the eye. As you're about to get back into your car, Officer Patel approaches you. Dolly, we've got some interesting news, he says. The victim's ID was a fake. We're still running down her real identity. You nod thoughtfully, taking in this new information. What do you want to do next? Yes, so what do I want to do next? Um, I use my streetwise skill to see if I can find any... Um, signs of gang activity. Okay, so significant difficulty 15, success degrees are combined reflex and streetwise with a dice roll of four. So I got 19, so I get a success with degree of 4. Not sure why he chose reflex, but usually this might be reflected in the, in the message you get. Um, so maybe he finds reflex to be more fitting. You take a moment to survey the area, using your streetwise skills to scan for any signs of gang activity. You've been doing this for years, and it's become second nature. As you look around, you notice that the alleyway seems quiet, but there's a subtle vibe in the air. You see some graffiti on the walls, and while it's not overtly gang-related, there are some telltale signs of tagging. The style of the tags is consistent with a particular crew, one that's been known to operate in this area. You also notice that the officers nearby seem to be keeping an eye on each other, rather than focusing on their investigation. This tells you that they might be waiting for something or someone to show up. You make a mental note of this, wondering if it's related to the gang activity. The thermal imaging device from earlier comes back into your mind, 
and you wonder if there might be some heat sources nearby that could indicate gang activity. You take a moment to scan the area again, using your equipment to see if you can pick up any anomalies. As you're doing this, you notice a figure watching you from across the street. They're trying to blend in with the crowd, but you've seen enough like them before. This person is likely waiting for something or someone to happen. The figure starts to move closer, and you can see that it's a young woman with a nervous look on her face. She glances around, making sure no one is watching, then hurries over to the alleyway where the body was found. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I... Um, I hide behind a dumpster and use my shadowing uh, skill to track her. Yeah, to track her. So, reflex and stealth. Getting total score of 17. You quickly move to hide behind the dumpster, holding your breath as the young woman approaches. You use your shadowing skill to track her, carefully observing every step she takes. As she draws closer, you see that she's trying to be careful, but there's an air of desperation about her movements. She scans the area around her, seemingly searching for something or someone, before finally spotting a small door at the end of the alleyway. The young woman hurries over to the door and tries it, to your surprise, it opens easily, revealing a dimly lit stairway that leads down into darkness. She hesitates for a moment, looking around nervously again, before deciding to enter. You follow her, staying in the shadows as you make your way down the stairs. The air grows thick with the smell of decay and rot, and you can hear the sound of scurrying rodents coming from deeper within the stairway. As you reach the bottom of the stairs, you see that the young woman is standing in a small room surrounded by crates and boxes. She's talking to someone, or something, in hushed tones, but you can't quite make out what she's saying. You notice that the room is filled with all sorts of scavenged goods, old electronics, broken appliances, and even what looks like a stolen car part or two. It's clear that this place has been used as a makeshift storage facility for some time now. The young woman notices you standing there, and her eyes widen in surprise. She takes a step back, looking frightened, and whispers something to the person she was talking to. Suddenly, the room erupts into chaos as multiple individuals emerge from the shadows, their faces twisted with anger and hostility. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'm just gonna show you. So th this is one example. So based uh, entirely based on the character sheets this whole story emerges and I, I want to show how if you just use a different character sheet you get a totally different experience but it's still using the exact same uh, background for the world and so uh, I can show quickly how the how the logic works so you write your input and first of all it checks if you the player has died and uh, if you if so it ends the game um so if not it makes this super query so first of all it classifies the significance of your player input 
And if it's mundane, it will just go straight down to making a story update. But if it is significant, it will do this classification of, uh, or it will classify the degree of success or failure. So first of all, all it will classify the relevant stat for the action. And second, it will classify the relevant skill for the action. And then thirdly, it will classify the difficulty of the action you try to perform uh, with easy being 10, average being 15, difficult being 20, and very difficult is 25. And so when it has done these three, it will make a die roll and then it will add together the results. And then it will return this to along with the query or along with your player action input. And then it will generate the story update based on all of that. And then, as I said, it's using this speech generation. And this is not local. This is the only part that is not using a local LLM. This is just because I couldn't find one. So at the moment, it's using OpenAI's text-to-speech. But as soon as a local text-to-speech model comes, I will add it to the to the system instead. And so it does all this and then when you have gotten the response or the story update, it will classify the story update itself. Um, and it will check what the outcome was. So it will check, did you get a wound? Did you add an item? Do you need to remove an item and so on? And so uh, currently, I only have the wounds and the item, but you can also add more, right? So you could maybe add um, some uh, contact, some per NPC contact or something like this. So, uh, yes, um, I'm not, this is the most difficult part to classify the outcome and update your character sheet based on the outcome. Uh, so this is what I'm working on at the moment. And so, uh, yes, I just want to show how it, uh, how, or how it looks like if you try a different, let's try a totally different um, character. So now I will, Use this guy instead. And yes. So now we have this guitarist um, who wants to become a wants to become a, a rock star. And it's still the this futuristic city, the same futuristic city. And of course, the chat history is uh, empty, so we need to start the story. Oh, yeah make some there are some weird errors sometimes but that's not a problem Welcome to new haven 22 5th, 5th. you find yourself standing outside a rundown apartment complex surrounded by the towering walls of the city's glass dome the air inside is fresh and clean a stark contrast to the toxic skies that lie beyond you're johnny goldriff a guitar wielding musician with big dreams of stardom your battered electric guitar, adorned with intricate electronics knowledge, leans against your side as you gaze out at the city. You've always felt stifled by the strict regulations and unfair treatment of the lower class within New Haven's walls. As a rock star, you believe you can use your platform to bring about change and make the city more just. You're dressed in your signature jeans and leather jacket, with your mohawk and full body tattoos on full display. You've got a certain swagger to you, one that's earned you a reputation as a bit of a troublemaker. As you ponder your next move, you glance down at your gear, a 
an electric guitar, a camcorder for recording videos, and some knuckle busters in case things get rough. What will you do? Your input, waiting for players' action, mundane significant, success, yeah. failure. Okay, so um, I wake up in my terrible apartment in the Phillips district, something like that. You wake up to a rough morning. You slowly open your eyes, groggily taking in the familiar surroundings of your small apartment in the Phillips district. The dim light filtering through the grimy windows hints at another bleak day outside. You rub the sleep from your eyes, feeling the weight of your worn out guitar case and the various scars on your body. <laughs> the air inside is stale and you can smell the lingering scent of last night's cheap beer and takeout food. Your mohawk looks a bit flat, and you'll need to restyle it before hitting the streets today. As you swing your legs over the side of the bed, you notice that your guitar case is still leaned against the wall, next to your battered electric guitar. You remember playing a few rough gigs around town last night, trying to get some new material out and make some connections with potential fans. The adrenaline rush from performing was still coursing through your veins as you passed out. You recall talking about maybe checking out that new underground club in the lower depths tonight, but it's all fuzzy now. You glance at the clock on the wall. Late morning already? Time seems to slip away when you're struggling to make ends meet. The rent is due soon and your funds are running low. You need to get out there and find a way to scrounge up some cash or else face another eviction notice from the landlord. <laughs> okay. Your current situation. You're in the Phillips district. It's late morning. Your guitar case is next to you. Rent is due soon. What will you do? Hmm. I go to my usual spot at the street where I play for points yeah playing for coins in the Phillips district. You grab your guitar case and head out onto the streets, making your way to your usual spot on the corner of Fifth and Main. The smell of freshly brewed coffee from the nearby cafe wafts through the air, mingling with the sounds of vendors hawking their wares. As you set up shop, a small crowd begins to gather around you. You tune your guitar and start playing a few familiar chords, getting the attention of the passing pedestrians. Some toss coins into your case, while others stop to listen for a bit, tapping their feet or nodding their heads in appreciation. Your mohawk gets some admiring glances from the crowd, 
and you take a moment to strike a pose, enjoying the brief spotlight on yourself. You're not getting rich off this gig, but it's enough to scrounge up some coins and get by for another day. As you play on, you notice a few familiar faces in the crowd, some regulars who come out to listen whenever they can. There's Tom, the guy with the thick beard who always tips well, Sarah, the waitress from the diner down the street, and that one kid who always tries to get close but gets chased away by his mom. You keep playing for a while longer, enjoying the freedom of being on the streets, making music for whoever will listen. As the crowd begins to disperse, you pack up your gear and consider what's next. Your current situation, you're still in the Phillips district. It's mid-afternoon. Your guitar case has some coins in it. The rent is due soon. What will you do? Let's see. Oh, oops. I pick up the coins from the guitar case and put them in my pocket. So there's always, it always generates many different um, um, directions the story can go in for you, which I think is pretty cool. So it's Tom and Sarah and this kid and you have the rent. And so you can, um, it really gives you a lot to, uh, to, to, to go on. You count your earnings. You carefully collect the coins from your guitar case and dump them into your pocket, feeling the satisfying weight of your hard-earned cash. You take a moment to count it out. Not that you need to, but it's always nice to know exactly how much you've made. As you stuff the coins into your pocket, you can't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. It's not a lot, but it's enough to get by for another day or two. You pat your pocket, feeling the coins jingling around in there like a tiny metallic heartbeat. You take a deep breath, feeling the warm sun on your face and the gentle breeze rustling your mohawk. You're still in the Phillips district, but you're ready to move on to whatever comes next. Your current situation, you're still in the Phillips district. It's mid afternoon. Your pocket is heavier with coins. The rent is due soon. What will you do? So I'm not sure exactly why it's doing this at the end of every story update, but I mean, it's a little bit, uh, <laughs> it's not always doing the same. So you can't really know what to expect anytime you're playing the game. And so we got our coins, a collection of hard earned money. So we got the coins in our gear. So yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna end it there. But as you can see, you can basically play whichever story you want and you can you can play whichever role you want, which I think is nice. Instead of being very focused on fighting and um, shooting, you can play like a rock star or you can play a taxi driver if you want you can play a bartender or you can play a, a company owner you can do whichever role you want and you can also define the universe however you want so now i'm using this sci-fi city under a glass dome but you could do whatever you want so i look up uh, I look out at the city, please describe what I see.
glimpse of New Haven. You gaze out at the city, taking in the sights and sounds of this sprawling metropolis. The towering skyscrapers of the upper heights pierce the sky, their sleek glass and steel facades glinting in the sunlight. Below them, a maze of streets and alleys stretches as far as the eye can see, lined with shops, restaurants, and apartments. To your left, you see the sprawling complex of the lower depths, its crumbling buildings and makeshift shelters, a stark contrast to the gleaming skyscrapers above. The air is thick with the smells of food vendors and exhaust fumes, and the sounds of street performers and chatter fill the air. As you scan the horizon, you notice the skeletal framework of the New Haven Bridge, spanning the chasm between the upper heights and the rest of the city. It's still under construction, but when it's finished, it will be one of the longest bridges in the world. To your right, you see the shimmering waters of Lake New Haven, its surface reflecting the vibrant colors of the sunset. A flotilla of boats and ferries chug along the lake's edge, carrying passengers and cargo to and from the city's many docks. The sky above is a brilliant blue, with only a few wispy clouds scattered across it. The sun is beginning to set, casting a warm golden light over the entire scene. It's a breathtaking view, one that never gets old, no matter how often you see it. Your current situation, you're still in the Phillips district. It's late afternoon. Your pocket is heavier with coins. The rent is due soon. What will you do? Okay, I'm gonna end this video there. So if there's anything you want to know about this, just ask me in the comments um, I will answer probably anyone that comments on this so uh, if there's something about the code or whatever just ask okay thank you